Hi, Melina. Thanks for having me. How are you today? I'm very well. Uh, much better given that clip you've just sent me. <laughs> <laughs> it made my day too, actually. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so in the in the past conversations, uh, um, we. Um, discussed uh, how we may fence off dilithia from some obvious obstacles and uh, we also discussed uh, uh, how you want to apply uh, 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 your strategies to some concrete cases we discussed briefly the liar uh, or the logical paradoxes in um, the case of motion today I would like to discuss with you, uh, in more general terms, whether dialetheism comes with uh, some commitments, or implicit or explicit, uh, with uh, uh, some view of uh, reality, uh, or with some view of truth. And in particular, I would like to, to tackle the issue of uh, what the world uh, must be like if uh, dialetheism is true, and uh, and to introduce the uh, the issue, I was like I would like you to discuss some views of uh, truth uh, which appear to be prima facie um, hostile to dialetheism, starting with uh, the so-called coherentist uh, view. According to the coherentist um, view of truth, what makes a uh, uh, belief true or false uh, rather than the presence or absence uh, of a fact which makes it true is uh, uh, the coherence uh, 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 or lack thereby with uh, other uh, beliefs and uh, this seems uh, prima facie to be in tension with dialetheism because the notion of coherence is a, a close cognate of the notion of uh, consistency and uh, and, uh, and if they are coextensive at least this seems to block the possibility of dialetheism by default. Could you help us diffuse this worry? Sure. Okay, well look, there, there are a number of issues there. Um, before we turn to truth, let's talk a little bit about reality, okay? Because one of the things you said was, what must reality be like if there are dialetheists? Um, so a dialethia is simply a true contradiction. As such, it's a statement, a belief, a proposition, whatever. Um, and if you take a proposition, such as, I don't know, um, Melbourne is in Australia, um, that's true because of two things. Firstly, because it, it's true partly because of the meanings of the words, like Melbourne and Australia and so on. But of course, it's also true partly because of um, the geographic facts of the world. Now, I guess um, for certain kinds of sentences, only the first kind of factor might be important. You know, to take a rather trite, old fashioned example, all bachelors and men um, seems to be true simply in virtue of the meanings of words, that the, the sort of world itself doesn't seem to be playing much role. But generally speaking, um, to make something true, there are two factors, and they've both got to be operative. One is the meanings of words, and one is uh, the, the kind of world itself. Um, now, maybe some dialetheas are such that uh, they're true simply because of the meanings of words. I mean, you might take the liar paradox to be in that category, for example. Um, but others certainly aren't. I mean, in a previous discussion, we discussed motion. And uh, if it's true that something moving that, that's obviously a fact about the concrete world so um what must the world be like for dilators of that kind to 
be true. Well, um, this is not rocket science. I mean, it's just got to be such as to make the proposition with those meanings true. Uh, and, you know, that's all there is to it. Uh, that's not a profound fact, uh, anything. Uh, it's just a fact that um, to make most things true, the world has to cooperate in, in some ways. Okay. So that's reality. Now, truth um, characterizes things we say about reality, uh, if we're lucky. And as you say, that there are many theories of what truth is um, in the history of Western and indeed Eastern philosophy. And you might say, well, is dialetheism committed to any particular account of truth? And the answer is no. Dialetheism is simply the view that some contradictions are true. What does true mean? Well, anything you damn well like. There's no official dialetic line on that. Um, and as far as I can see, pretty much any view you have about truth is compatible with dialetheism. Indeed, some push in that direction. Um, you talked about... Um, correspondence and coherence theories. Let's come back to that in a second. Um, I think probably, mm, okay, I'm not sure there's any consensus amongst contemporary Western philosophers about what truth is, um, but probably the view that most philosophers now would agree to is something like um, uh, deflationism about truth. Um, so take, you know, propositions such as Melbourne is in Australia, uh, well, uh, the sentence Melbourne is in Australia is true if and only if Melbourne is in Australia. That's all it takes. Yeah. Um, so in, in general, there's this thing called the T-schema, which I'm sure we've talked about before. Um, if you take some sentence, um, then let, let's call it A. Then A is true if and only if A. Um, so this is um, a deflationist view about truth, and clearly um, uh, this, this is uh, there's nothing in this which uh, is repugnant to dialetheism. Um, you know, the last sentence is true. No, this sentence is false. Is true if no, if this sentence is false. End of story. Um, okay, so there are of course many other theories. Um, and uh, you raised the question of coherence theory explicitly. So let's talk a little bit about that. So um, it's kind of hard to tie down any particular philosopher who simply endorses a coherence theory. Um, often when you look more closely at what they say, um, it's a bit more complicated than this. But you know, the sort of textbook example uh, textbook definition of coherence is that something is true if it coheres with um, everything else. So the thought is that beliefs will come in kind of large chunks or networks and um, you choose uh, the one which is the most coherent or if there's more than one that's maximally coherent you choose one of these and to be true is simply um, a member of this chunk. Obviously that can give rise to a certain kind of relativism if there are more than one maximally coherent chunks, but uh, let's set that issue aside. Um, the crucial question then is what you mean by coherence. And it's certainly true that uh, many of the people who've discussed this have assumed that Consistency is a necessary condition for coherence. If that's true, then obviously that rules out dialetheism. But the people who've um, thought that consistency is a necessary condition for coherence um, have really given an argument for it. They've taken it for granted that um, inconsistent views are not only wrong, but obviously wrong. And so, um, whatever else a coherent view is, it must be consistent. Now, um, this is precisely the view that 
paraconsistency and dilutism challenge. Okay, now, um, what you've got to remember is if you're talking about a coherent set of beliefs, um, there are many criteria other than in inconsistency. So, for example, um, let, let, let's take a theory in physics. Um, why do we think we've got a good coherent theory of um, gravity, for example? Well, it's because it does a lot of explaining. It ties a lot of facts about the universe together, the things we see. It's relatively simple. Um, so these are all kind of well-recognized epistemic virtues. Um, maybe our current theory of gravity is consistent, maybe it's not, that's another matter. But it's clear that there are many components to coherence other than consistency, even if you think that consistency is one of them. And in fact, consistency is a pretty weak virtue if you think about it. Okay, I don't know um, if you've ever talked to a flat earther, you know, people who believe that the earth is flat. Uh, this is a crazy view. I mean, it's incoherent with so much of what we'd know about the world. But if you argue um, with a flat earther, um, what will happen is this. You'll say, well, you know, we know that the earth is flat. <laughs> we know the earth is not flat, Jesus, because uh, we sailed around it. And they say, well, yeah, but of course, that just means that the, the earth is a disk and we've gone around the circumference. So we've been up into space and we've seen that the earth is a sphere from space. And they say, well, you know, the, the moonshot was just a, a, a hoax, you know, something manufactured in the, the laboratories of Houston or whatever. You, you know, you can add as many of these facts as you like. And the flat earther is going to have a reply. Um, now, what they're doing is making their view consistent with everything. Yet, obviously, what they're doing is crazy just because, you know, whenever you have something, they pull a rabbit out of a hat. It comes from elsewhere. So the, the whole theory is a tangle of ad hoc hypotheses or ad hoc moves. It's not simple. It's not unified. Um, and obviously that speaks against it much more strongly than the inconsistency of um, a naive theory of truth, for example. So the bottom line of that is that um, there are many criteria which uh, feed into the notion of coherence. Uh, you might think that consistency is one, but you don't need to. Indeed, if you do, it's going to be a relatively weak criterion for the kinds of reasons that I've just been through.